Hello, everybody. Come on in. Oh, I need my laptop. I need to be able to see who's coming in. No phone. You didn't give me one. You didn't give me one. Well, we are here. And at your request, we have changed a position in my house. And so um, I know that we're going to wait a few minutes. Yeah, we're going to wait a few minutes for all of you all to get in and for that nosy demon to jump off of all of y'all because ain't no sense in me starting to talk about nothing about God because y'all ain't finna hear nothing until you get a real good view. So while everybody coming in, we're going to give everybody a chance to just get that little nosy thing off of you so you can look all around and see. <laughs> yes, we are here. Yes, 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 yes. Letting you come in. I'm telling you, this cold is trying to get me, but I'm not going to let it. Um, mm -hmm. And we are getting ready to have a great lesson today. Trust me, it's going to be awesome today. Somebody's dialing on this phone. Mm -hmm. So should we use this phone or not? Is that the ministry phone? Okay. So... What we're going to have to do, it just went blank for a minute, but it's back. Um, maybe you can do me a favor. We're making the adjustment because we're doing this by my cell phone rather than a camera. And um, we're just making sure that everything is on and it's working properly. Can you come and tilt that up a little bit? The handle just a little bit. I'll tell you this, the tab bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit more, you just, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, we are here, and this is one of the most favorite rooms in my house. <clears throat> and um, I call this room the carousel room. And, um, and the reason why I call it the carousel room is because I believe that dreams do happen, and I just believe that there should be a place. Nettie, come here, I just need to... Um, Tilt it up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it to me. Yes. I believe that there should be a place where um, you can go in your house and feel like um, you just kind of stepped out of the world for a minute. You know what I'm saying? And just stepped into what you love about life. And... Um, I've always been one that loved carousels, and um, I love carousels. When I was a child, that was the ultimate, when my mother used to take me to this one um, store area where outside of it, it had a carousel, and that was my most favorite thing to do, was to um, ride the carousel. Uh, Nettie, I need you to come and look at this, because um, on here, I'm not getting much light. Not getting much light, <clears throat> so you may have to turn up that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, is that better? Okay. So I I, I absolutely love um, carousels, and so because of that, I um, we're just trying to make all this work because. Some of you all were really complaining about you like the fact that um, you may have to bring that light right there, that one square light right quick. Um, it's on here. Um, you were saying that you liked um, <clears throat> the fact that I was taping in different places and, um, and they liked it because it was more personable. And we got quite a few of those requests. And honestly, I love it myself. I think it just... Um, got to a place where we were trying to make the recording also for <clears throat> television, which we would be doing that. So we've kind of devised a little plan that on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, I would just tape from my phone like this. And then Thursdays and Fridays, we would tape the program so that it can be aired on national television because it requires a different lighting. It requires a lot of other different things. But um, 
I heard your request and um, and I kind of liked it myself, you know, just to sit down and just talk to you from where uh, we were and um, different locations and all of that. And I, I, I like that. I have a tendency to like that. And so this is where we are. And uh, as you are tuning in, of course, um, this code trying to get me, but I ain't going to let it. And um, if you've just tuned in, and like I said, I'm not going to even try to compete with a nosy demon because I know us. And so I'm going to let everybody get a chance to look around. And um, mm -hmm. that um, is a carousel from 1929. It came from uh, the original um, Coney Island. It was one of the original horses, bring it forward, uh, from Coney Island. Um, and it was one of the original horses from Coney Island. And that's what that horse is. It's an antique. And um, I absolutely love it. And you probably can't really see, so I'll tilt a little bit and show you. Um, I have lights all the way around like a carousel room and that's wood, a wood frame that a friend of mine drew the artwork on the curtains for me and that's wood and painted artwork because I really wanted to have the feel that I was in a real carousel. I was on a carousel and so you know, you got to have places where you just fix it up, even if it's just a corner in your house, even if it's a corner in your bedroom. There should be something on your dresser or something somewhere in your house um, that is like an untouchable where you just have your own moment. And um, this room is mine. You know, I, I love this room. It's like I can just come in here and just sit and just kind of bring it all in. So I love it. I love it. And these lights are all the way around. They're all the way around the wall of the room. And uh, so when you're sitting in here, it kind of gives you the feel that you're really in a carousel room, that you're really on a carousel. I think it's neat. I think it's neat. <clears throat> well, we're going to get started. I need some reverb. We're going to get started um, on our lesson today. Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. Never mind. We're going to get started on our lesson today. And um, uh, <laughs> Drusilla said, my daughter would love that room. <laughs> I absolutely love it, too. I, I love it, too. I love it, too. Um, so today... It came across my mind and my heart. I was thinking about um, vision. That's what came in my spirit, vision. And I started thinking about vision from a perspective of, from a perspective of how we see things and as we began to move forward, because remember, we can't stay where we are because when we come out of Egypt and we are on our way to the promise, that spot, that, that resting spot um, can become a tomb if you don't keep the activation going in the womb. It can become a place that um, you absolutely lose it in. And I started looking at, um, I started looking at um, the fact that Israel did that and they started in one place. And as they began to move out of Egypt, um, the Lord said to them, I want to take you to another place and I have a prepared place for you. But on your way there, don't forget that you're not 
after I brought you into the promised land. Do not become afraid of the Amorites. And the scripture said, and God said, and you did not hear me, and you did not listen to me. And so then they went into uh, another level of captivity where God had to call on Gideon to try to get them out. And then I said, okay, God, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. And he began to talk about that was a place right there, y'all, where, where um, they made it to the promised land. They made it to the promised land. But they got tripped up in it, if that makes any sense to you. If that makes any sense to you at all. They, they, they got tripped up in it. She's coming to fix the sound for me. Um, hey, where are you at? I got it on 10 and it shouldn't be. I have it on 10 and it shouldn't be. So I need you to give me some more volume in the microphone and, and give me a little. And the only reason why I'm using the microphone, guys, is because, you know, I know it, it's kind of still studio feel, but my voice, you know, with this cold, it, it's really, um, to my reverb, it's really uh, kind of um, giving me a problem. So I need to just kind of, maneuver as much as I can. Yes. And now answer and reverb. Yes. So, <coughs> so when you're looking at the fact that number one, you can be in the promised land and still get messed up and you can be in the promised land and still have to go through a deliverance and not enjoy where God has landed you because you've got out of focus. And then you can be like Samson, who came into the world with a purpose. And when he came into the world with a purpose, there were, and, I, and this right here just kind of dropped hard in my spirit. Um, I was upstairs doing some things, and, I, and, and it came to me that um, this right here can be very well connected to, to, um, to salvation and the way we the way we maintain and govern our salvation to make sure that we stay in right standing with God because we can either preach the sin thing from a, from a religious perspective of, you know, you shouldn't sin. Or there is another way of presenting this to you to the point that it becomes an opportunity for you not to. It becomes an opportunity for you not to because of what God has put in your womb and what the Lord is about to do in you. And it's going to be short, people. I'm telling you, it's going, this is going to, there are going to be things that are going to happen before this year is out. And so we don't, you don't have a lot of time. You don't have a lot of time. You don't have a lot of time. So Samson had a call on his life, and there was an assignment in his womb, but sin for him, sin for him, for him, and I want every individual to hear this clearly, sin for him was what God told him not to touch. Who did I just say something to right there? It's what God tells you not to do has nothing to do with unless and let's really be clear on this let's really be clear on this there are some things that other people can do that you can't do there are some things that other people can say that you can't say there are some places that other people can go that you absolutely cannot go why because my womb and the vision that God has given me requires a certain restriction. It requires a certain restraint in certain things because only God knows what things are going to affect the outcome of the way that thing is going to be made manifest and viewed to other people. I'm really saying something here and I really hope somebody is getting what God is saying. When, when Samson 
lost or moved away from. And hear the difference. When he moved away from his insight and began to operate with his eyesight, his eyesight conflicted with his insight. And the choices that he made affected his insight and therefore he lost direction and became entrapped by what his eyesight wanted and he refused to adhere to the directions of his insight. Whoa. Did you hear that? Let me see who heard that. Yes. 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 Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? You know, the hardest part about being in a different part of the house, because I feel like laying down on this couch and going to sleep. It's like I just want to just lay over. But um, are you hearing God today? Because the bottom line of it is, is this, and, 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 and that is um, your, your insight has a divine directory in it. There's a navigation system in it. And when God is leading you in different directions and telling you how he wants you to move, you cannot move away from that. Who am I talking to right now? You cannot move away from that. Let me see who I'm talking to. Yeah, yeah. You cannot move away from that no matter what. And so here he is. He's supposed to be the deliverer of the children of Israel from the Philistines. And yet he goes and commingles with them. And he allows his eyesight to see a woman that was going to cause mixture in his soul. Are you hearing that? Mixture in his soul, meaning his lifestyle. Meaning he was going to be under the conviction of who he is. And he was going to use the power that God had given him when it was convenient for him. When it was convenient for him to exploit what God was doing for him and in him. But then he was going to allow his eyesight to make it convenient to what he felt for his flesh. Are y'all hearing that? Are y'all hearing that? And, and so as a result of that, he lost his two eyes. God had to permit that the hindering thing be put to death. My God, my God. My God, my God. He had to permit it. That's why some things that some of you all have lost and people that you, you still crying about it, you still crying about it, but God has to permit certain things to be a loss so that your insight can be restored. Because mm. some of us can't get the insight back as long as the eyesight is active. And that's what causes us to be messed up sometimes. Causes us to be messed up because we always go in by what we see. And I, because I don't see nothing, because I don't see nothing, because I don't see nothing. You know, it, it, it ain't really nothing going on, Dr. Bynum, because I don't see nothing. Insight never loses vision. Insight is connected to the prophecy. And so as long as you operate in insight, you are never without vision and you are never lost. And that's why when Samson got in that dungeon and he had lost his eyes, when he got down in that dungeon, his prayer was this, Lord, if you would just anoint me one more time that I may avenge myself for my two eyes, for my two eyes, because he lost the ability to see what God wanted him to see. And so when he, listen, listen, listen to this, listen to this. When he refused to connect his eyesight with his insight and keep them both synergized and parallel so that what is coming up out of my womb, which is my insight, 
is flowing over into my eyesight and now I am being directed where I'm supposed to go. And so when God allowed his eyes to be taken, his insight gave him perfect vision. And after a while, it didn't matter about a Philistine woman. After a while, it didn't matter about Delilah. After a while, it didn't matter about anything. It didn't matter about, you know, whether or not I was considered as being the strongest man in the world. It, all of that pride and arrogance and all of that me, me, and I, I, and I got to do this so that people can know. And I would take advantage of the anointing that is on my life or take advantage of the gifts that God has given me. And I would play around with it. All of a sudden, all of that was brought into right perspective. And God allowed his insight to allow him to reach out to somebody to help him to fulfill that promise, even though he no longer had eyesight. So then let's look at that. Let's look at that. Who am I talking to? Let me look down here and see if you're getting this. You see if you're getting this. Yes, yes, yes. So let's look at this thing. So then what becomes the significance of eyes? What becomes the significance of eyes? Eyes are considered a spiritual or a natural presence. Did you know that? That eyes is a presence. Eyes is a presence. That's why the scripture said, and the eyes of the Lord is beholding us. Or the Lord has set his eyes in our direction. Because eyes represents a presence. I says I'm there. I says I'm here. Because like, for example, you know, I'm sitting here in my home and I'm looking into this iPhone and I'm talking to you. But if the screen were to go black, it would mess with the presence, even though you would hear me. But there's a certain sensing that comes along with you being able to see me. Because seeing me says I am present. Oh God, that right there will preach all day long and all night. So if the Lord doesn't have our eyes set on where he is sending us, then it's an indication to God that we are not present in what he is saying. We hear it, but we have not brought our inner spirit into what God is saying. Because our eyes now, watch this, because our eyes says to the Lord, because I have set my eyes on you. That's why I put that little post-it up that says, uh, stay focused on the future. And you saw me looking because my eyes says to my future that I am already present there. I just said something right there. Now, you, Holy Ghost, you is teaching up in this carousel room today. Did you just hear that? That when I set my eyes on my future, then I am saying to my future, I'm with you. I'm present. I'm ready. I'm attentive. I'm focused. All of me is in. And that's why a part of your eyes cannot be set on the present and it cannot be set on the past. Because wherever your eyes is set, wherever the attention of your life is, and wherever your eyes is set, that's what you are saying. You are saying to the present, I am not in the future. I am here worried about all the dumb stuff that is going on in my life. When you take your eyes back to the past, what you even say into the present is that I'm not here. My body is here, but my spirit is living in another era. My spirit have taken me back to another era. That my life has already processed too. I can't go back and fix that. It's already done. And so when I take my eyes back there, it's like the Bible said every time we sin, we crucify Christ afresh. That's what's happening. Every time you take your eyes back there, you relive in the accident. You relive in the issue. You're giving it new birth. You're giving it a brand new, uh, are y'all hearing me? It's as if it just happened yesterday. That's why if you watch yourself, when you start talking about stuff in your past, you start crying as if it just happened. You have the same emotions as if you just experienced it. The same bitterness comes up. The same hatred comes up. Who am I talking to? 
because you have taken yourself back there and you have relived that incident and now that past is now your present because you're reacting in the moment based on something that happened in the past because that's where you set your eyes. Go, oh, Jesus, who am I talking to? Are you hearing that? Are you hearing that? And so then there are, there are several definitions for eyes. I'm only teaching people that, I want, that want to be futurized. I don't even know if futurized is a word, but I just made it up. I'm only teaching people <laughs> that want to be futurized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not teaching people that wants to be pasteurized. I'm not teaching people that want to just stay out in the field grazing. I'm teaching people that want to go to another level. So then what is the eyes? What else does the eyes represent? The eyes represent spiritual perception. Spiritual perception. Let me look at this. Let me look at this. Let me look at something. Let me look at something. Uh, Spiritual perception. The ability to see, hear, or become aware of something through the senses. The state of being or process of becoming aware of something through the sensing. A way of regarding, understanding, or interpreting something. A mental impression. So then when I, when my eyes then become spiritual, are y'all hearing that? I didn't say religious. When my eyes become spiritual, then my eyes people begin to take on a spiritual perception, which means I now understand the underlying of what I am seeing. I am being shown something that is in the spirit that may not exist in the natural, but because it exists in the spirit, it does exist. So when I can see it in the spiritual, then it does exist. It's waiting on the time of launching into the now. Are you hearing me? It's waiting for the time of launching into the now. But you cannot bring what is in the spirit into your now if you do not have proper vision. Because let me ask you something. Are you bringing what is in the future here? Or are you taking what is in the future and taking you there? Mm-hmm. Which means there becomes your now. I'm going to sit that one right there. There becomes your now. I am moving me there. I am able to move there because I can now perceive and I can now understand and I can properly interpret what I am being shown. Because why? I have set my eyes on what God is saying. And because I set my eyes there, I perceive that. And because I perceive that and I understand that, watch what I'm saying to you. Please get this. Because I set my eyes there and I perceive there and I have set my eyes there based upon a spiritual experience, then if I have set my eyes there, then I have just set myself there. Which means I cannot be in two places at one time. I cannot be over here in the past. If I'm going to embrace the future. Because remember the eyes is a presence. So where do you want to be present? Do you want to be present over here? Or do you want to be present over there? And so the only way that you can get from where you are now. The only way that you can get from where you are now. You saying I'm not moving. I feel stuck. I hear somebody talking to me today. I feel like ain't nothing moving. The only way you can move yourself from here to there. You got to set your eyes there. So you can be present over there. And then you will see movement. Who am I talking to right there? Hmm. Who am I talking to over there? Whew. 
God help me. God help me. I just got to drink something. God help me. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, God. Is anybody listening? Are y'all listening? Okay. Okay. So then, it says then that eyes are not just a spiritual presence or a spiritual perception. But eyes then also is classified spiritually as fountains. As fountains. As fountains. What is a fountain? A fountain is something that springs up. A fountain is something that springs up. So when my eyes are spiritual, then my eyes causes my present state in my womb to spring up. Okay. My eyes causes a gushing of the will of God to come up instantly. In other words, it's connected to what you hear people say when they say stuff like, uh, when they say stuff like um, a sudden miracle or you hear people say stuff like, um, and God is going to do this and it's going to be a quick work. Okay, this right here is how you get a quick work. You get a quick work when your eyes become spiritual enough to perceive what God has already done and your eyes cause you to be present in the future and when your eyes causes you to move into what God is saying, when you get there, then the eyes invoke the power of the word of God in your womb and it gushes up. I don't know if you just heard what I said. Did you just hear that? I don't know if you just heard that. Oh, God. I don't know if you just heard that. Okay, so, one second, y'all. So, if my eyes is a fountain, if my eyes is a fountain, then the scripture says in Matthew 6 and 22 and 23. <coughs> Matthew 6, 22 and 23. It says, your eyes are windows into your body. Your eyes are windows into your body. Your eyes are windows into your body. If you open your eyes wide in wonder and belief, your body fills up with light. In other words, I am no longer depressed. I am no longer going through changes. Because here is the key word right here, belief. When the perception of my eyes are filled with spiritual belief, which means when I believe what God says, 
not what I'm seeing with my natural eye, but when I believe what God says, then my vision becomes a spiritual vision. So I'm no longer looking. That's why people, you can't start explaining to people why you got joy and they see hell all around you. I, I can't go into all that. Because now what you want me to do, you want me to believe God for one thing and keep my eyes on another. And I can't do that. And that's why you have to look at everything and say, well, you know what? All this is changing anyway. Ain't no sense of me getting all tied up in, in all of this because all of this is changing anyway. All this is not going to be the way that it is. Why do I know that? Because my vision have now been locked to a spiritual place. And now my vision is locked into a belief and not just in action. It's in a belief. It's in, it's in what God has classified as my future. So now, watch this. So now, if I believe the perception that God is showing me, then my life becomes a life of light. So I'm no longer in darkness. I'm no longer in depression. Because why? The windows into my body, the windows into the way that I live, those windows now are revealing to me that there is a different life that I am sitting in. That it is my responsibility now to walk in that in the natural so that I can now connect my natural with what God has already done in my spirit. Oh my God, I just wish somebody would hear that. I just wish somebody that... And it says, if you live squinty-eyed in greed and distrust, your body is a dank cellar. And when I looked up that word dank cellar, that word, that word dank that word dank meant a life of mistrust. A life of mistrust. That was the word that stuck out the most to me. It said cloudy. It said gloomy. But it said a life of mistrust. Which means when I live squinty-eyed. Squinty-eyed is when I'm, I'm trying to make my natural eye see what's in the spirit realm. Squinty-eyed. Squinty eye. It's like right now, if I go to look down at this, at this, at this uh, phone and I go to look at who's, who's watching, I get squinty eye. I get squinty eye because I don't have clear vision. And it's not until I put the glasses on that I can see clearly what everybody is saying. I can see Lakeisha Jackson saying teach. I can see um, Latanya Renee said, fix it, my Lord. I can see Debbie Reed saying, you are helping me. I can see Evan saying, so I can line up with the spiritual. I can see Shamika saying, locked into the light. I can see this. But if I take these glasses off, if I take my help off of my face, if I take what's been prescribed for Juanita Bynum, nobody else can see clearly out of my vision. Hold up, Shandaya. Y'all gonna make me go to church in here. Nobody can see my vision. This is my prescription. And if I take my prescription off of my eyes because I want to be cute, because I don't want y'all to think that I wear glasses, because I'm trying to impress somebody, and when it's time for me to read what I am supposed to read, I cannot see what is really being said to me. These people on this page are talking to me. They are on my page. They're responding to what I am saying. So if, I'm, if I want to hear and see what they're saying, I have to squint because I took my prescription off. I went in a way that wasn't prescribed for me. But the only way that I'm going to be able to see and communicate with who is on this page, that because of our eyes, because they can see me, watch this, because you can see me on this camera, I may not be able to see you, but I can see what you are saying. And because I can see what you are saying, I am identifying a statement and a belief system with a name. Are you hearing that? So in order for me to see what God is saying, I got to put my prescription on. I got to be a person that don't touch what God told me don't touch. Don't go where God said I cannot go. Don't do what God said I cannot do. Why? Because it is a prescription for my eyes. It is a prescription for my insight. And what is my eyes? If I keep this prescription on my eyes, my eyes now says to the Lord, I am present. 
and I am attentive to what you are saying to me. I am in the future. I'm where you are taking me. I'm already there. And now I'm waiting for my eyes now to be a reflection of what you have spoken about me. Are y'all hearing that? Is anybody, Lord Jesus, is anybody hearing what he is saying up in here? God, have mercy, Jesus. Woo! God, 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 God. That's your prescription. That's your prescription. That's your prescription for your insight. Mm, mm, mm. Listen to this. 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 My God from Zion, Jesus, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. It says your body is dank. Your body is dank. Your body is untrusting. In, in, in other words, I can't get my body to go look at a new house. I can't get my body to go and look at a new car. I can't get my body to go and fill out applications for a job. I cannot get my body to sit down and write out a business plan for the vision that God has given me. Why? Because I'm squinty-eyed. Because I'm trying to operate my eyes by another man's perspective. When I got to use my prescription, I got to go by what God is saying to me. Are y'all hearing me? Y'all making me preach too hard up in here with this cold. And I don't feel like all this, but y'all driving me today because I feel it. I feel somebody on this page. I feel somebody on this page. You got to come on into it. Because that's what's causing you to become dank. That's what D-A-N-K. That's what's causing you to become dank and untrusting. Well, you cannot trust what God says. You cannot trust his prophets. You cannot trust anything. And so if you cannot trust, you cannot move. You cannot move, you shall not have. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He says it caused your body to be dank in a cellar, in a hole, in a depression. If you pull the blinds on your windows, what a dark life you will have. If you just pull the blinds down and say, you know what? Well, I just don't think I'm a, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Why? Because it says here that the eyes, listen to this, you all. Listen to this. Oh, Jesus. Listen to this. It says that the eyes is the, it said the presence of eyes in the prophetic context is indicates. Listen at this. Are y'all here? Now you about. Y'all, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me in my carousel room. Don't make me do this in my carousel room. It says here that, listen, listen to this so carefully, that the presence of eyes in the prophetic is an indication of protection and the supervisory powers of the individual's world. I'm about to throw my glasses. <coughs> Y'all making me cough up on that one. I got to lay back on that one because that one right there just took me out. When my eyes are spiritual and I am using the prescription that God has given me, then my eyes becomes my supervisor and my protection. You better tap that screen. <laughs> You better tap that screen right there. Oh my God. Oh, then my eyes now become my supervisor. My eyes become my supervisor. My eyes become the person that is dictating and watching and helping me and guiding me. My eyes is the one that I report to. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? My eyes now becomes my protection. I am protection. I am protected from the fowls and the works of the devil because I have set my eyes where God wants me to set my eyes, which means I am present over there. And so it is my eyes that protects me from over here. Is God teaching us today? There is a wild of the enemy over here. There is a wild that sits in my past over here. There are demon spirits that are gnawing and wants to grab a hold to us. The past hates the fact that it's being rejected and it's being left there to wither up and die. And so, listen, it's not giving up hope. It's just waiting for you to turn your eyes away from what God is saying so that it can get you back in the presence 
of destruction. But because my eyes have spiritual perception and because my eyes is my future and because my eyes is the present and because the presence indicates to God that I am sitting over here in your wheel. It protects me from what's over there. And though it reached for me, I'm out of its reach. Oh my God, is somebody on this page going to turn around and shout with me today because I feel the presence of God right now. Are you hearing that? So to remove my eyes from my future is to move myself from the presence of protection and to put myself back in the hands of the devourer. Oh, you better say something up in here. It is my eyes then that becomes my supervisor because it is my eyes that says, I see a little something going wrong right here. I see you not doing something right right here. I see you starting to feel dank. I see you starting to act like you don't trust God. I see you starting to feel like you're confused. I see you starting to act like you in the dark and you don't know which way to uh, set your feet because when you start seeing yourself in all of these different ways where you're in disarray and you're in confusion and all of that that's when you got to pull back take yourself for a ride in your car by yourself get off in your room by yourself and reconnect your eyes refocus put your glasses back on put the prescription back on so you can set yourself back in the presence of the future are you hearing God who am I talking to right now who am I talking to? Who am I talking to right now? Who am I talking to right now? Who am I? Don't play your eyes. Don't play your eyes. And that's why the Thank you, Jesus. That's why, that's why the Bible said, oh yeah, he up in the carousel room too because I pray in here a lot. No, no, no. That's why the Bible said, set no evil thing before your eyes. That's why the Bible states, set no evil thing before your eyes because the enemy is after your eyes. The enemy is after your eyes because if you set something evil in front of your eyes, then what you're saying to evil is that I'm present with you. Woo! That will preach all by itself. You are confirming to the spirit of evil that I'm here and I'm present. And I'm not going to ever be present in the place of evil. Not when I have something in my womb that is launching me to my future. Not when my future is a prophetic promise to me from generations. Not when I'm this close and I'm on the brink of having everything that God says I'm going to have. I'm not going to set my eyes in agreement with evil. No, I am not present. Not here. Not now, not never. Who am I preaching to today? I'm preaching too hard for this cold. Good Lord, have mercy. Are y'all hearing this? I, listen, it's, it, 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 it says here, it says here, it is, it is the, 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 the supervisory, the supervisory, the supervisory powers, powers, powers. It's the supervisory powers, which means my my eyes being set in the right place um, contains the power to tell me which way to go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's like working on a job and you got somebody walking up to you telling me something. And I think you should do this. And, I think, and then you turn around and say, and I think you need to go in and get you some business because you are not my supervisor. You are not my supervisor. Amen. And so when you're doing something that you ain't got no business doing and you kind of know you done snuck out and you already had your break and you're trying to sneak out and use your cell phone and go call somebody, one of your friends will say, here come the supervisor. And then you put your phone up and you start walking another direction. Or you're sitting at your desk and you know you ain't supposed to be eating at your desk. And all of a sudden, you see, the, you see the supervisor coming and you take your sandwich and you take your potato chips and slide them in the desk. Because the supervisor says, get your life in order. The supervisor said, you're not going to be on this job doing something incorrect. The supervisor said, there are, law, there are laws that are laid down in the bylaws from the H&R, from the Human Resource Department. And you're not going to break those rules. Because if you start breaking those rules, it's going to, perfect, it's going to uh, affect your performance. When, you're, when your performance is affected, your paycheck is affected. So now we're down to the point why we ain't got our check yet. And I just said a mouthful. Now we're down to the point of why we ain't got our check. Because we have ignored the supervisor. 
and because we have refused to let the supervisor correct our vision. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right here. Because I want you to know something. This is a powerful word. This is a powerful word. I'm going to pick this word up tomorrow. This is a powerful word right here. This whole business of the eyes, of the insight, this ain't no joke. And I don't know who God was talking to today, but you better hear God. Your eyes is what's going to cause movement. And your eyes is your protection and your supervisor. Your ability to get your insight over in your eyesight and get your eyesight over in your future so that you can decree and declare to the enemies of our times that I am no longer present over here, but I am present over there because I am where my eyes are. You know what I'm going to do tomorrow night at 10 o'clock? I'm going to post a, a, a video. And the reason why I felt led to post this video is because the Lord started dealing with me yesterday about the presence. And I went to the golf conference <clears throat> And after I got done doing prayer, the Lord broke out in worship and he broke out in a prophetic song. And yesterday, I just felt in my spirit, we put that song on and it literally took over this house. Everybody that was in this house was laid out somewhere. Just one of, one of, the, one of my workers ran and got on their knees. Another one was balled up in the chair, weeping like a baby. The other one was on the steps. I was sitting in the seat on the side and it just arrested the room. And God began to say to me, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. I need you to help the people to create that presence so that their vision of the insight can come alive and begin to consecrate their eyesight. And tomorrow night, I felt led of the Lord to tell you that are watching on this page. And you put your kids to bed. Whatever you got to do, get off somewhere by yourself. If you got to put headphones on and go out and sit in your car, God is going to give you a moment in his presence. Because we have to bring our eyes into the future. And the only way to get there, I've never done this song before, it is not recorded. It was something that God just birthed out in the spirit right there that morning in prayer. But I felt led of the Lord to release this. And at 10 o'clock tomorrow night, that video is going live. And God said, you're going to have a moment with him. You're going to have an experience with God that's going to reactivate your insight and it's going to cause your eyes to set you over in the presence of your future and it's going to allow you at this time and this moment to be shot out of the reach of the enemy I know the spirit of the Lord is saying this you be present at 10 o'clock tomorrow night because God wants to do something for you. And we're not talking about the church because we don't have a problem worshiping in church. We don't have a problem touching God in the church. 
But he wants you to learn how to touch him in your car, touch him in your house, touch him in your basement, touch him in the bathroom, wherever you need to be in that house. Because God said it's time for the reactivation of your vision. Because you will never get what God has for you. As quick as I see this thing coming in the spirit realm, some of you will miss it if you don't get your eyes over in the presence of where God is trying to take you. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. My God from Zion, you don't know how much I hear the Holy Ghost on this one. I hear him on this one in such a powerful way. In such a powerful way. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God, my God. I just hear the Lord. Jesus. I just hear the Lord. I hear the Lord. I hear the Lord. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. I got to go. Bye, y'all. I just got to go. 10 o'clock tomorrow night. 10 o'clock tomorrow night.